let me say a word in defense of reason in dialogue with faith. Because faith is that proof. Faith unites us to that substance. But reason, in order to realize its full potential, needs the horizons revealed by and truths contained in the faith. And not just any faith, but the Catholic faith. When I was growing up, I often did not have the courage to pray. My, film, my family did not pray as much as I wanted to. And I was not brave enough to pray in front of them. I don't know whether you have this feeling experience. Instead, I would go to the bathroom to pray privately. I was, if I was in church, I would, I would look around to see if my friends or teachers were there before kneeling to pray. As I matured, I was able to find courage in my faith. And now, prayer and God surrounds my entire being throughout every, everything that I do in life. I have been lucky to be able to build my career on an art form that I love. I am fortunate that through music I can bring God and spirituality to my audiences. For example, last season when the Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra presented Mozart's Requiem, I wanted to create a program that would convey to the audience that Mozart prayed to the same God that we pray to today, and show them how can we find solace and guidance through prayer, just as Mozart did. The first thing I had to think about, and the first thing I always think about when I prepare a piece, is what was the composer's purpose. If Mozart wrote a requiem, the purpose is clear. It is a liturgical piece for the church. So do I have the right to put it in a concert performance? <laughs> of course, because many revered concert pieces were originally written for the liturgical purposes. But I must also remember that the Requiem is not a parallel piece to Strauss or Tchaikovsky. So I wondered, how can I do this as a concert piece and still express the message Mozart meant for the music to convey. The me message that death was not something to be feared, but a natural part of life. The answer came to me through the Austrian tradition of the death bell. Three strikes of the bell to announce that someone has died. Let me show the program so that you can see how I put this together. You see here a part, the first part till the requiem starts. I see this as a preparation. You can imagine this big, wonderful beginning of the requiem where Mozart describes the death. But people in every concert hall, they come, they have drinking some of their friends and drinking champagne. Now they're sitting, expecting the conductor. Um, they are not in the mood of, for this beginning. So I thought, I have to introduce something. The whole concert is about 60 minutes. So the first 30 minutes, are a preparation. And you will hear now how I started the death battle.
the bell was ringing. It is still a tradition in Austria. When somebody dies, they ring the church bell. We call this the death bell. And I put it three bell beats. Why? Because of the Trinity. And if you looked on your watch, then you will realize, and I asked the percussion player who beats the bell, it's exactly seven seconds. Because seven is the holy number. Of course, the people doesn't know that. And they should not know that. They just should feel it. <laughs> so I was thought about what kind of traditions um, were um, in a time when, um, when the funeral mass for Mozart happened, 5th December of 1791. There was one tradition um, in St. Stephen Cathedral. They had uh, uh, the, uh, the Gregorian chants. And so I added also this element into this preparation period. So let's listen a little bit on the text, Requiem um, to the, for the Gregorian chants. Swiftly as is humanly possible. 
I swear this to you by all that is holy to us. And I am forever your most beautiful son, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. This was John Lithgow in the Heinz Hall last year, last season. Now I added also to this preparation um, some poems by Nelly Sachs because I wanted to have a link to our time of the Second World War. Um, Nelly Sachs was a survivor of Auschwitz. Wonderful poems. Now you see, we have 30 minutes of preparation, and I thought this is now the time to um, introduce this wonderful sound of the requiem. Listen to the strings. It sounds like a funeral march. Listen to the bassoon and wind instrument, the tears it's composed. And listen the first entrance of the trombones, the first loud entrance, and the timpani, and the trumpets, the symbol for the last church. Because 
Hans Christian Eilson Curie Eilson, and he wanted with this sharp dissonant accord have a question mark. <coughs> Do we really have mercy or not? And listen now what happens after big break after this accord, which I prolong a little bit.
this effect is, was just wonderful because people in the audience didn't expect that. Something is they saw they were turning around. Where is that? You know? The best for me would be if it's unseen. But he needs to have seen the conductor so that I need to see that. <laughs> Another part in this in the next recordare is on the word Qui Maria Absolus. And when I work with the solist singers, uh, I always ask the question. Do you understand Latin? Do you understand the text? Which Maria do we speak about? Big silence. <laughs> silence. And then sometimes they ask, oh, it's Maria, the mother of God, of course. No, it's Maria Magdalena. Cri Maria Absolviste. It means you have found you, uh, Maria, you have solved it and saved it. And what did Mozart, and he knew that, of course. And he put a waltz in a requiem. Can you imagine, in a requiem, in a serious piece, he put a, somehow a Viennese waltz. Let's listen to this, and you feel a little kind of a swinging way.
was now uh, completed by his one of his students, Francis Albert Zusmeyer. And this is for me so emotional. First of all, it's the tears, and then it abruptly ends. And now, referring to the letter Mozart wrote to his father, I took this sentence out that death is my best friend. And it's one of the most beautiful motets by uh, Mozart he wrote the other year. It brings you hope and peace. Have no fear of the death. So let's listen this wonderful silence after this cut, and now it starts the whole. The death is my best friend. about what they will hear based on past performances that they have heard. But when you follow your heart, and your heart is open to God, then the risk is worth it. Knowing that you have been honest to yourself and your faith. Without my own connection to God through prayer, I would not have been able to create such an event. You are fortunate that you are being uh, prepared here at Franciscan University for the challenges ahead of you as you go through life. By choosing an institution that offers spiritual as well as professional guidance, you have chosen a path fortified with moral and religious support, along with a strong education in your chosen profession. 